focus on great marketing and average music or great music and average marketing in 2020. I've got a lot of honey, I'm gonna give you. If you really want me, baby, come through. Move a little closer, I know you want to. Good morning, my friends. It's 8, 10 in the morning. Today is one of these really weird German holidays where absolutely no one absolutely no one knows but celebrate it. I feel like a truck hit me mostly due to not sleeping a lot because I'm a lot more busy right now because on top of doing everything that I usually do I also construct the studio all by myself. I don't like to say it but today I'll take a day off from studio constructing and the best way to start a free day off is by making <laughs> I know, I know, I'm in the studio, but no constructing today, just making a little bit of music, which is very enjoyable, no hard work. And we'll do another edition of Q&A, because I only have one hour here, I want to work as efficient as possible, head back home, enjoy, relax, some quality time, and yeah, let's get started. First up, is the studio complete? No, absolutely not. Why didn't I win the giveaway? We only can pick one person, so uh, good luck next time. How much money do you usually pay for vocalists? This really depends. This can be 250 to six, 700. That's what I usually pay. But there are people that pay 2,000, 3,000 for like really high quality stuff and people that are already known. This is really up to negotiating. Best audio interface for a beginner and the cheapest possible. If you want the cheapest possible that has still decent quality, Focusrite is your call. Is it better to release a song on my own or sending to a record label? If you're a beginner and have absolutely no fan base, then the record label is probably the, the better choice because they will help you increase the tension. But once you get to a certain point, considering doing it yourself, might be a better choice. How do I treat windows acoustically? That's a little tricky. Like here in the studio, we just put these absorbers in front and it works, but you could also try and close them off, seal them off, but then be careful because there might be moisture trapped inside and cause problems. So I would just put something in front that you can remove any second. How will I know if I won the giveaway? Okay, let me address this really quick. We're doing every Friday a giveaway, usually for speakers to support you guys, producers during the virus crisis. And some people accuse me of all of this being fake because they never win, which is like very not logical in any kind of way. We always, every Friday, announce in my Instagram story the winner. The winner is tagged. You can look up the winner, get in touch with them. And usually within one or two weeks, they will receive the prizes depending on where they live. So yeah, you will know that you won because you're tagged in the story. And if you don't reply within one or two days, we will DM you. If you still don't reply, we'll DM you again. So far, everyone got back to us and got his stuff. Did you ever use repost exchange on SoundCloud? I don't really know what it is, but probably you pay for them to repost your song and you get more plays. I used to do that years and years ago where it was still cost efficient. Nowadays, it makes more sense to put the same amount of money into Spotify playlists and actually get money back because the plays on Spotify give you money instead of costing you. SoundCloud really sucks, in my opinion. What's the number one thing you want to accomplish in your lifetime? Hmm. I mean, like just having a happy life and just do whatever I feel like doing and I already actually have that being more successful with this channel, more successful with the music, but all of this is probably happening like step by step. I'm totally fine. Do we think DJing will change from using a DJ deck to something else sometime? Um, yes, it will like merge a little with like live performing music. So you will see more buttons, controllers and knobs to like change the music on the fly even more. Cause let's be honest, DJing got a little boring. It's too easy. It's like all automatic. So a lot of DJs implement effects, delays, and some like play something along to it. And that kind of 
technical stuff gets better and uses less performance on your machine so you could actually live perform electronic music if you wanted to. What is your personal approach in recording vocals and making it clean? To make it clean, the room, very important. The singer, very, very important. The mic, kind of important. Get a decent mic. And then like how you record it. Like it, it needs to be right in front of their mouth. Put a pop shield in between. Make sure they're standing upright. Like all of these little details. But the key is like finding someone that can actually sing. Would you like to have a collab with one of the most famous DJs? Ah, uh, I mean, yes, business-wise, a very smart move. And I should actually start collaborating with people. But I don't like to work with other people on music. I just like to make it myself on my own on my terms and my kind of speed. So whenever someone else is involved, I, I usually lose interest in finishing the song, to be honest, but I should, but I don't know. Focus on great marketing and average music or great music and average marketing in 2020. I personally think if your goal is being famous and making money, the marketing is more important than the quality of the music. It has to have a certain level so that like the normal listener doesn't say it sounds like shit. But once you're in that kind of range where it's fine and okay, marketing should be your number one goal. Also something that I don't really do as much as I should. Where should I start learning if I want to become a producer? The best is if you can find someone that teaches you, a mentor. If you can't find someone, then maybe pay someone. If that also doesn't work, there's YouTube. I learned everything myself by talking to the right people, going to libraries back in the days where that was still a thing, magazines, um, YouTube, of course, and there are some paid courses that are quite all right. So just like try to have as many sources for information and learning as possible because the truth is like, beneath all of these, not one of them. Are you happy about 100K or don't care so much? I'm really, really happy about it. I can celebrate due to the virus. And like the, 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 the subscriber numbers, it's not something that I directly can kind of control. It's just like constantly growing due to a lot of old videos that are up. What I'm more happy about and looking forward to is reaching another year of daily vlogging because that's directly my accomplishment, making every day a video and not stopping. And that's actually coming up soon, like just less than 30 days. Can you make good mixing without having ideal acoustic treatment but software solutions? Ooh, the software solutions that kind of EQ your speakers to, to make the room sound good. They work to some extent, you still need acoustic treatment. And if you have a room mode at your sweet spot, they can boost that frequency as much as they want. It's impossible to gain that because it's being canceled out. So I would go with like as much as possible acoustic treatment because you can work faster and you feel way more comfortable. If you make a decision, it translates on other systems. It's less guessing. So first learn music, learn your DAW, make the first couple of songs. And once you get to the stage where everyone tells you it's a nice song, but it sounds mixed like crap, then invest in, in your room. Demo email, question mark. It's linked in the description. Just like send me your songs and we'll listen to them. When are you expecting your studio to be finished fully and be able to work there? I don't know, there, there are still so many question marks. This year, all of it finished, 100%. Speakers, outboard gear, cables, all of the walls. But being able to sit in there and already start working, maybe a month just to floor the walls around and I could already like work in there and it would probably sound better than in here. And then the ceiling, front wall, doors and that kind of stuff. I don't really have to rush. I want to make it perfect because I still have this studio so I can still make music and still construct upstairs. So no problem. How can you still stay inspired also in bad times? Yeah, I mean, especially now. Whew, tough question. Stay inspired. I mean, if I have like a small dip in inspiration, I just listen to music that I love and this usually fixes it. The second I listen to music that I like, I want to do like something similar good and I'm really inspired and I just start working again. If it's like a bigger dip where you're just frustrated thinking about giving up, which I had millions of times, like like 
every month, every week, I was thinking about giving up making music back in the days where I was completely broke. So what always helped me was to just think about what I already invested into it and thinking about if you now give up, all of that is gone. Every single second you learned how to produce music was wasted. My mom always used to tell me like, it's like someone hitting a big stone with a hammer for years and years and, and like being frustrated, giving up, going away and the next person comes and just hits it once and it breaks. You don't want to be that person that walks away just one hit away from achieving your goal. So just stick to it. Keep on doing what you love. Keep on being like focused and eventually it will work out. I, I really believe in people that work hard and smart and do it long enough and longer and, and like more sustainable than everyone else. They will somehow succeed. There is always a path to make it happen. Anyways, I think with that being said, have a nice day. See you tomorrow again, back here in the studio. More construction madness.